uh, thank you for sticking around. Uh, my name's Andy Moore, I'm a conservation education manager at Colchester uh, Zoo. Uh, folks, I was born in a zoo. Uh, I wasn't delivered by a vet. Uh, I am fairly ugly, people will jump to that conclusion. Uh, but uh, I was born in the site that is now Wild Place and it will become the, the wonderful new uh, Bristol Zoo. So mum didn't make it to hospital, so I have that uh, claim claim I was actually born and delivered uh, in a zoo. All right. Uh, where, I've, where I've become uh, institutionalised within our, our community. I tried to leave once, but I got a nosebleed, so I came back. Um, so today, uh, we're going to be talking about you, the most important people, the managers of God. Okay? Um, so you can say, say whatever we want in this safe environment. Uh, but uh, we are the, foot, the practitioners of the title. I like to call us foot soldiers, okay? So you're the foot soldiers, the people on the ground delivering these things. Um, are we ready? Are we happy? You right? Can you, everyone see the screen okay? We're going to be up and we're going to be moving around today as well. Um, I should also say you are going to get some homework as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, is that alright? Should we get the lights off guys so we can see? Is that alright? So I am going to give you some homework, okay? Um, and I'll, I'll explain about that. Um, you do also need... Um, my email for the homework, but like a really intelligent person, I haven't put my email anywhere on here, so I will make sure you get that at the end. I'm also, as I'm sure all of the presentations will come to you in some form as a, a conference pack, um, my sort of, all of this will be a PDF for you, uh, because it's talk, called a toolkit, today is a toolkit, what we'll do together, uh, and I also have some uh, links to the uh, World Zoo and Aquarium Conservation Education Strategy, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and all sorts of other things for you to dive into. Um, but I'll explain homework um, uh, a little bit later. Um, uh, what I'd like us to start off is just spend two minutes, grab very gently, warmly and lovingly a person near you, uh, and just have a chat for two minutes about what strategy is and what it means to you. Okay, off you go. <laughs> okay, folks, so hopefully you've just had a good conversation about what strategies mean to you. Maybe you've talked about um, exposure you've had to some strategies. Uh, maybe some of you have talked um, not positively about strategies. Strategies for me uh, 15 years ago were things that people much higher up in an organisation uh, than I made look pretty in lovely glossy documents and sat beautifully on a shelf uh, collecting dust for many years. Um, hopefully some of you talked about positively living and, and you know, breathing uh, through good values and stuff in, in, a, in a strategy. Um, but before um, uh, the, the conference started, I, I sent out a quick um, type form survey link and thanks for those of you that filled in. I'm sure many more of you did, but rushing to get the presentation to Coral, I probably missed a few uh, missed a few sort of respondents. Um, but again, as a little bit light on the screen there, but strategy uh, in terms of that feedback, there's some sort of key words that came out planning, um, uh, sort of that, 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 that sort of bedrock of what uh, people assume uh, to be in there. There was some negativity which came through as really well, uh, which, was, which I was really pleased to see, um, like jaded. Um, buzzwords. Who's played bullshit bingo in a in a meeting? <laughs> when you, yes, yeah, you know. Um, and that's those strategies that are done to look nice. Lots of lovely pictures. Uh, they're excellent for bullshit bingo. Okay, they're a little bit more difficult to play bullshit bingo uh, with a, with a good strategy. Uh, but sort of some of the, the the bits of feedback that we got. Does your organisation have a conservation education plan or strategy? Hurrah! Fantastic. Really, really good. And a lot of the time when I've spoken to people, this isn't some big glossy document. It might be a simple, you know, double-sided sheet of uh, um, A4 with things scribbled on the back of a fag packet. Oh, I was going to say fag packet. I should probably say, sorry, uh, FSC, sustainably reused piece of cardboard or something like that. <laughs> yeah. um, that's also a plan and a strategy. Um, have you had input on creating um, and contributing to your, your sort of educational strategies? Um, slightly less, but over half of uh, people sort of contributing to building good strategies. Um, then sort of, there are a lot of different strategies out there, and today I'm going to sort of focus on the, uh, the new standards, um, but I'm going to skirt around some other things a bit later. Your homework is to do with one of the other sets of strategies that we, we have. Um, look at that. Look at this. Everyone, everyone's heard of the BIASA Conservation Education uh, Guidelines, so that's a good positive thing. Um, 
slightly fewer on the ocean, ocean literacy framework, whether that's sort of a zoo aquarium device thing, who knows. But um, then th this one may be, um, I was a little bit more surprised, this is the World Zoo and Aquarium Conservation Education Strategy. Um, oh, just uh, around about half of people have heard of this. This is a really good living, breathing document. Um, and I've put links to uh, videos which give you the toolkit to go and explore how you can deliver parts of the World Zoo and Aquarium Conservation Education Strategy uh, in your, your own way. Um, so those uh, YouTube videos will be really good for you. Um, do you use these strategies? Yes, look, this is good. You're using a variety of strategies to plan your work. And although we're going to be focusing again on the Biasa, um, uh, we've got a Stockholm and Guidelines now, the Biasa Conservation Education Standards, um, we will, uh, you know, it's important to be aware of other strategies and use those in your thinking uh, and planning as well. Um, so, what is um, what is a strategy? Well. Dictionary definition, um, a plan of action designed to achieve a long-term uh, or overall aim. Lots of very key words in there for me. Um, maybe your know, plan's good one, action, yeah? Um, so this, these should be sort of actionable things that you're able to achieve. Um, unfortunately, the word strategy comes from Latin strategium, which means generalship. So like a lot of things, it has a military, uh, a military sort of origin. Um, but really, what I'd like you to do uh, now with uh, sort of maybe within your same groups, but uh, you, you can move around. We're going to be moving around a bit more in a moment anyway. Um, but I want you to just have a little conversation. You've talked about what a strategy sort of means to you, but what should a strategy be? Okay, so a strategy should be, and then one word with maybe a short rationale, we'll go around and, uh, and take a, a sort of strong hold and get people to, to contribute, okay? So, off you go guys, five minutes, one word to that a strategy should be. Boom. Very much. Um, so, what should a strategy be? Does anyone want to contribute and shout things out? Realistic. Realistic. Actionable. Actionable. Achievable. Achievable. Yeah, that's a really important one, isn't it? Yeah. And this is where we have to go carefully in strategies. Strategies should be aspirational uh, and inspirational, as, uh, as Becky talked about. But also, uh, you can achieve a lot to uh, set in those sort of aspirations through things like vision and mission, which is Still strategy related, but not quite part of strategy, but, but absolutely, yeah. Uh, any other things? Yeah? Uh, we said inclusive, but in terms of like including everyone's ideas and not just yeah. coming from yeah. upper level, but everyone. Absolutely. So strategy is almost not one of the, the last thing you do. It's the first thing you shouldn't do is sit down and start writing a strategy. It's all the other things that go before it, and that's, of course, um, testing your, speaking to your audiences, um, your staff, all of your staff, uh, about an organisational direction, for example. Yeah. Any other things? Realistic. Realistic, yeah, absolutely. Measurable, sorry. Yeah, no, that's really obviously measurable, yeah, so we can um, see where we're going and provide data uh, to, to back that up, yeah? Uh, we said clear. Clear, yeah, clear, yeah. concise, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's have a, a quick trawl of the internet and sort of revealed some of these things. The question to ask, of course, is what is a strategy, but what is a good strategy, of course? Um, and in our circles here, we've got well-researched, and that's what I mean about not start, the, the first thing you shouldn't do is start to write a strategy, okay, sit down and write it. The first thing you should be doing is running focus groups with staff and collecting surveys from staff and your audiences, for example. Um, accessible, and within that accessible comes clarity uh, and other things about all of the different audiences that have to use that strategy, it has to be clear for them. Um, and, you know, executable is that uh, actionable uh, one as well. So in there is achievable, realistic um, as well. Um, so yeah, good strategy, being uh, simple uh, and concrete. Strategies that are hundreds of pages, I'd suggest maybe are on the way to not be, being good, usable strategies. Um, focused and directional, so very clear in which direction you want to go. And within there, there's a bit of aspiration uh, as well. Action-oriented, um, a collaboration. So it shouldn't just be one person's you know, ideas and will imposed upon a, a group, of course. Um, it takes culture into account and culture of um, your organisation, the cultures you operate within uh, as well. Flexible, we've got, and accessible too. Um, bad strategy. And there are plenty of examples of bad strategy out there. Complex and abstract. Um, aiming to do too much. So non-realistic. 
Um, focuses on ambitions and visions. That's fine to focus on focus on ambitions within a strategy, but again, vision and mission can do that to inform the strategy rather than focusing on it. Um, because you, you know, you're with, in your vision and your mission, your language is nice and flowery and aspirational, but this has got to be pretty clear and focused. Um, <laughs> a battle strategy assumes we live in a rational or idealistic world. We do not live in a rational world, okay? Um, static and immovable. You know, companies that uh, started a five year strategy in 2019, if they're good companies, they don't have the same strategy now because obviously COVID happened. So that was a massive world, uh, world dominating effect. So they should be uh, flexible and not static. Um, and, and given to consultants. Again, I should put in here given to bad consultants. Um, there are some really good, we have a wonderful consultant in the form of Adam uh, in the room. Uh, and the good consultant will help facilitate a team to deliver a good strategy. But, you know, people that haven't bought into it, and Adam's, I've known Adam for 10 years or so, and he spent a long time getting into this industry and making the effort to find out about our industry. That's an example of a good consultant. Um, 10 and 8. Okay. Um, I've got now a short video, uh, hopefully, of, um, we hear a lot uh, from governments about strategy. Um, and I'm a child of the um, 80s. And I was lucky enough to have a father who let me watch things like Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister and Black Adam and all those sorts of wonderful things. Um, so this is, uh, you know, you can look at Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister uh, and it's a pretty accurate description of modern, modern governments across the world. Um, so hopefully um, this will play for us now. <coughs> we all know the ball stage strategy. What's that? In stage one, we say nothing is going to happen. Stage two, we say something may be going to happen, but we should do nothing about it. In stage three, we say that maybe we should do something about it, but there's nothing we can do. <laughs> stage four, we say maybe there was something we could have done, but it's too late. <laughs> and hands up if you recognise that in modern politics today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, that's a, you know, bad, bad uh, strategy, and don't always look for governments for great strategy. Um, so, of course, evaluation uh, of all of your focus groups and your audience uh, work will help you um, uh, drive a strategy. Um, quite a lot at this conference and many others uh, I've been to, people talk about that word evaluation, and within eva these, these standards, evaluation has some challenges. Um, but really, we've got to stop looking at the word evaluation and thinking about that as the end point. We should be thinking of evaluation and replacing that with aims and goals. Because of course, if you set very good, strong aims, goals and outcomes, the, the path to good evaluation reveals itself a little bit easier. So forget evaluation, the thing at the end. Let's concentrate on really strong, good aims uh, and outcomes uh, at the beginning of our process. You know, and, and that's not to, we're, a, we're a room of creative people, so we have creative ideas all the time, you know. But um, they've, they've got to go through some sort of filter of good, good aims and strong outcomes. Uh, and only then when we set those can we evaluate those correctly. Um, and that sort of process in terms of building your strategy and when you've delivered a strategy or delivering it should be regular uh, and ongoing. Um, review it at intervals, there's no point again in having a useless strategy that sits on a shelf, you should have regular strategy meetings, um, which allows you to adjust the output uh, accordingly. All of that together will create a living and evolving strategy. Again, companies had a 2019 strategy, that would have changed as long as they're a good company uh, in relation to, to COVID. So, uh, what's all this got to do with uh, me or you? So it's about preparation, really. Um, we're talking about bigger strategies and where you fit into it, but you might not have a departmental strategy. You might think, well, you know, how am I going to go about building it? But you all have your own internal strategies as well on how you deliver things. So that's just as valid a form of, of strategy. Uh, and it's about preparing, you know, in that old adage, if you fail to prepare, then prepare to fail. So strategy should be a good preparation tool for you. So a good strategy, again, uh, that you've built will allow you to filter your ideas and get the ones that don't fit into your strategy and put them to one side. Um, to shape your aims a lot better uh, and of course to improve the quality of your activities as well. Um, so Becky's talked about this as something to feed back on the uh, um, sort of 
uh, larger sheet outside. What I'd like you all to do, folks, is I've given you um, some post-it notes. So answer that question with one word, a short sentence, whatever you want to do. What are your challenges with strategies? I'll give you five minutes or so. So write down your post-it notes and hand it in. Uh, we're not going to hand it in the end, actually. What I'm going to need to do is, as you've written them all down, just kind of stick them up on this fuzzy felt board. I'll collate them all, and then as the committee, we'll divvy them out, we'll try to provide some broad answers to some of those challenges and suggestions. Okay? So, five minutes. You can, again, chat about them in your little groups, then bring them up and start sticking on there. There are sweets and chocolates. I'm afraid I don't have any sort of dietary requirements, sweets or chocolates. They're just good old quality sweets uh, and some sort of swizzlers sweets up as well. Help yourself as you come up as well. Okay? You know, if you look like just a class of naughty people, you know, snuff sweets into the dance. Um, but no, uh, get tucked in. Brilliant. So yeah, I'm going to sort of group them up and we'll uh, divvy some out uh, and we will sort of start sending some uh, suggested activities and ideas out to overcome some of those challenges. Um, so we're going to do some um, more group work now, kind of the, almost for the, the rest of the time we've got left. Um, so what are you already um, doing um, in that it meets the Biasa Conservation Education um, standards? So to do that, um, I'm going to let you sort of organically sort this out, so stand by for a mess. It's just to sort of group yourselves, like three groups down this side, three groups down that side. So you're going to need to turn chairs around and stuff when I finish talking. And then when you've just sort of made three groups on each side, someone just come on up. There's a copy of the standards. Again, obviously not to read to in detail now, many people in the group are coming around. There's Kerry and Joe as well, so we can sort of dip in to inform people on different areas of the standards. Um, but there's just in the middle of our um, flip chart paper here, the question is, uh, how are you meeting conservation ed education standards now and also in the future? So it's a kind of an idea exchange, but just bung everything down on those. So look at particular um, sections, take individual, uh, individual standards. How are you meeting those? What does that look like in your collections, your teaching? Yeah? So is that, does that make sense for you? <coughs> Brilliant. So there is a pen on each of the six charts. There's a copy of the standards, apart from one, so I'm hoping someone will have a copy of standards. There's a copy of standards there by the looks of it, so that's good. Maybe you guys pick up this one with that standard. But guys, get yourselves up to three groups down each side, turn your chairs around, come and collect some stuff. Adam, <laughs> collaborating uh, and sort of talking about what you can do in the future, what you're currently doing to meet in uh, towards meeting one or, or a number of those different um, standards, so, so thanks for that give us an uh, indication. So um, there are lots of other external strategies in the world uh, that affect our work, okay, the national curriculum. Um, obviously we've got uh, BIAS and ERs uh, standards, um, the Department for Education, our new uh, paper on climate change and sustainability as well, and the um, UN Sustainability uh, Development Goals. I'll come back to um, some of those in, uh, in a moment. Oh, I'm going to come back to that in a moment as well, your postcard, that's your homework. Um, you're going to get this, guys. Each of these has a link embedded in the image. Um, this is Andy Moss, who is the senior um, social scientist at, um, or research scientist at Chester Zoo. Rather than me bang on about UN sustainability uh, development goals and how they relate to zoos, uh, Andy did a presentation, I think, at Biosa AGM in Dublin uh, earlier this year. So it's 20 minutes, um, uh, 20 minutes long. Do um, take sort of um, 20 minutes, I was going to say 5 minutes, but you can't watch something that's 20 minutes in 5 minutes. <laughs> do take 20 minutes sometime before Christmas to have um, a look at that. And then do the same exercise we've done here. Have a think and pop me an email and I'll give you my email at the end. Uh, before Christmas if you have the time on how you think zoos and the work that you do might be able to meet some of these um, UN sustainability development goals. So that's homework number one. There's multiple homeworks. Okay. Um, I also chucked this in. This is a bit of an older article now, um, but it's uh, some former colleagues at Bristol, Claudie uh, and Amy, did uh, some, a presentation at the IZE a number of years ago. Uh, and it's quick methods of evaluation. I call it quick and dirty evaluation. Post-it note stuff, smiley faces, uh, you know, hands up, all sorts of different things that you can use there. So that's 10 methods of quick and dirty evaluation to get you some quick figures. Uh, but again, all of those links in there um, will help you. 
Um, I'm not going to go through the doing the SWOT analysis, but doing the SWOT analysis on yourself and your um, and your team is a good thing to help you identify areas to work on and include in your strategy as well. So I'm going to fly through the next few slides. Again, these are things that I did with my team to start building our strategy. So a SWOT analysis. And it helps us also um, uh, to plan activities that we have and just put them in a bit of a matrix here of value. So um, at high staff time, low staff time, is it more fun recreation stuff? Can we get other sort of more lofty um, uh, conservation education in there? We just plot things on a chart to help us build a picture of which things we can develop. Uh, this is all stuff that we do pre-writing pre the strategy. I'm asking a bunch of questions. I'm not going to go through all of these now, um, but we sort of <coughs> identified where we were as a team and what we'd achieved. It's a nice way to start strategy planning, talking about the successful stuff, which helps to lay a positive foundation to build a strategy. You can do this in small teams, individually, however you need to. Again, I'm not going to go through the different points. You can digest these in the PDF that you'll get, but uh, asking yourself where you are now in your achievements. Um, what do we do really well as a team? Um, and these were some of the things that we decided we did really well um, at Colchester Zoo. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Also, things we could have done better as well. So thinking about what hasn't worked, um, what unintended or unforeseen consequences there were, good or bad, to our activities. Um, yeah, so sort of just really taking the, the, that temperature of where we uh, think we could have done things better. So all sorts of things there to digest. I'm running short of time. Um, what we do negatives um, as well, asking those sorts of questions uh, to yourself. Being honest with yourself about the skills you have individually and within your team. Because if you're not honest, you're not going to be able to deliver things properly. So a skills analysis is a really important thing to do. Again, to go where we are now, again, more things about uh, creating uh, lists of the jobs that we do, then organising them in different ways. So create a list of jobs on post-it notes. Um, things that are most important to us, things that are least important to us, um, our favourite things, least favourite things to do, um, activities we should do more of and expand, and activities we should do less of, just organising them on a, a sliding scale of a, a flip chart or a whiteboard or whatever. Okay. Um, then, of course, um, identifying who you work with is a really important thing to do. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know what the formatting is, I'm jumping around there. Um, but people we want to work with, how can you identify who you don't work with? Is there anyone you work with you don't want to work with anymore? You want to work with less, maybe, yeah? Um, and then sort of making a plan on how you're going to uh, reach those audiences. Skills gap analysis as well. Um, you can do various activities there. I'll go through that now. I'm going to get a stop card in a minute. But yeah, so this is sort of what, what it looked like. This is kind of the um, end result. So this then happened uh, many months after uh, many uh, sessions with my team and others uh, around the zoo. Okay, um, so yeah, I won't go through it all now, but we sort of divided up into into different areas to make it a living document that all of my team can uh, access. Um, I've also now turned it into something that's not a beautiful glossy document, but it's a really sort of um, colourful, boring, ugly Excel document. But because it's now all my strategies in an Excel document. Uh, my team can go on and identify things they've been done, uh, they've been doing, uh, and put them. Talk about things being measurable. They can put the measurables in there. So we've got different areas of the strategy over here. The specific area, what we're going to do about it, how we're going to do it, uh, the measurables. Uh, so that then turns into a data column uh, and any comments there. So we found that quite a useful thing to keep it a real living, breathing, evolving thing. Just transpose all of that lovely word document into an Excel document. That, does all of the graphs and charts and wonderful things, things for you. And this is the evidence then you take to your um, managers to get money and all sorts of other things. Okay, I'm just going to very quickly go back to your main homework point, uh, which is to write yourselves a postcard, um, and I will then post this postcard to you um, <laughs> next summer, okay, to see how you're all doing, okay. Uh, and it will be a, a, a timely reminder, it will be a kick in the arse, it will be a nice thing to receive. So you've got a mixture of postcards there, there's some with lovely foxes and other things on. Anyone that has a blank one, um, uh, I'm going to turn my kitchen into a sweatshop and my daughters will draw you a nice picture. Oh, okay? Does anybody want a blank one? Oh, you get a oh, you didn't get a blank one. Brilliant. They're great. They'll draw you some nice things. They're really good at drawing monsters and bad parents. I don't know where they get their inspiration. 
So guys, just very quickly, whilst Joe's giving you a few of those out, um, mine to myself is, sorry, I'll be very quick. Dear future Andy, you have created a team plan, but you are not living some elements of said plan. By summer 2023, you will, one, go through sections of uh, the plan at team meetings to filter your daily life through that plan and strategy. Uh, and two, you will display parts of the plan in the office in large print and around your areas of uh, operation for all to see. And also I'm going to share it on the website for our teachers and our users and our audiences to see our strategy as well. Um, it's a uh, VFSC card, hopefully, and the pop a stamp on it and I will um, post them out to you uh, next year. So just take a few minutes to um, think about it, but I think we'll end now. So over lunch as well, maybe, if that's okay, because I don't want to take up any, any more time of lunch or anything. Is lunch next? We have to wait for the other group to get back anyway. Oh, so. okay, okay. Well, if you want to start now, think about what you want to kick up the arse for next summer in related, uh, being related to sort of how you're delivering things, your internal, your own strategy, your organisation strategy. What do you want me to remind you of?